almost kind of add up to all of those but here we go we are starting it off with empire gaming coming in with the first attack against chasmac gaming and we have nobody coming in with a blizzard lalo he's only got three invisibility spells here yeah, and starting things with Blizzard, I mean, this is something I will expect a lot from Empire Gaming, I and mean, we, we have some of the best Blizzard Lado attackers in their team, but as well, while the Super Wizards are doing their job on this top side, we should take, we should take a look at this left side. Take a look, Raged Up Scatter, double Raged yeah. Up Multi Fern Towers. This Ooh. is going to be tricky to get through, especially for a Lado attack, so I cannot wait to see how he's going to handle that, because it seems like he has to lalo that part because his heroes are diving in from the right side. Yeah, with this queen, she's going to make her way to the right, taking out this Lava Hound and these pups. We have the Golem now, really going to provide that tanking. The Ground Expo locks out into the Golem. King's going to follow in. They look like they can get some real nice value as he's got two Super Wall Breakers to continue this path in. Royal Champion could assist, go into that Monolith, the Lalo is going to have to start relatively soon, otherwise time fails can be an issue. That's right for sure, time is always a factor, especially in those multi-stage attacks like um, Blizzard right here. He is going, diving into this poison tower, triggering it early, trying to take down the scatter now. And now the Lalo is unleashed from this bottom side with another Hound to still play. But this back end, this is what I'm afraid of. Double rage oh. tower, uh, double raged up Inferno Towers. Yeah. This Royal Champ is barely getting that scatter down. Oh, just gets down as the Warden Headhunters. You're gonna have to pop that Warden Internal Tome, but they're gonna get stuck onto the defensive King first. There's a the Haste. He's not using the Warden ability yet. Finally now just uses it as the balloons are coming across. And like you said, there's the defensive rage spell tower that is raging off these infernos, the scatter, the grand warden holder, Oof. everything here that can shred through loons. Take a look at that rage scatter. It took down a huge part of that base, but what wow. is the counter to rage up defenses? Just non-stop freeze everything. <laughs> <laughs> he had so many spells just for this one part of the base. It was crazy. Queen going down, Roy Champion, no ability left, and this one uh -oh. air expo could really be a decider yeah. with this defense expo trying to take down everything. There's a backhand oh, air diggy. defense still as well. Diggy MVP maybe. Oh, that Diggy clutching that air expo. But now watch this. The Warden's going to stop targeting these defenses, and he's going to start to turn around and go for everything other than the air defense. He's going for the Dark Elixir Storage. Only 19 seconds. This air defense might just be the MVP for Mech. <laughs> Uh oh. Oh, it's getting close. Wow. No, there's two pets with that warden, the phoenix and the owl. Oh, one shot. Oh, time. time. It's only the time to get this oh, defense. No. And we have CMG Temper coming against Anthony's base with a. He's got a bad spell. Only one, which no poison. Most likely it's going to be a skelly donut. If I'm going to try to guess correctly, taking out a, a clan castle. A monolith and something else, or maybe an inferno tower. As this flame flinger is going to take its time, and there we go. We have double skellies taking out a monolith, the multi, and the CC. You misplaced the one tile, and this stuff could stay up. Uh oh. Uh oh. Wait a Ooh. second. They're not going for the seat. Oh no! The Roy Chimp! Yeah, pull no the skellies way. away! Wow. wow. We now talked we about it yeah, earlier. Yeah. yeah. We, we talked about it earlier with the attack of us that this strategy, this skelly donut, is just so hard to pull off. And we see exactly here because it is so unforgiving. I mean, you just have one tile your spell off, and the entire attack kind of feels impossible to be saved, especially on Tunnel yeah. 15, where it is so hard to come back from not good openings anyways yeah that is rough unfortunately but can he recover with the invisibility spell onto his queen because the air x will lock onto her but the problem is there's a bunch of skellies here we do have an invisibility spell for this town hall he's gonna have to freeze it queen mm. ability secures the town hall as a dragon rider grabs his air defense as he's gonna have to start off this level after the world champion 
that was just deployed at the bottom side. Yeah, now the important thing as well, with those matches especially not being always those crazy high scoring, is you need to go for percentage as well after an opening like this. If something has gone wrong or something like that, you need to make sure that you're getting the best percentage out of it because you are still in this match. Like, this match is far yep. from being over as it would you, some pros would, would, might have said on turn of 14, like as soon as you have a fail early, it feels like kind of impossible to come back from. But on turn of 15, anything is possible. You said it earlier as well. The one stars always might be happening. And considering how the opening went, I think he did a really good job in saving this attack. Yeah, great effort there from Temper with that clan castle coming out. Those ice golems uh, were a bit of a problem, but at the end of the day, the ice golems really didn't do too much to the Lalo. All it would have really done is slow up the heroes. So it was the kind of pathing around and that defensive rage that is slowly just coming back right now really picked off those balloons quick from that eagle artillery but once you don't take out a clan castle like that your confidence in the attack can completely shift and really hard to focus on trying to get that three stars he does secure the two so great there great job from temper of chas Mac gaming but axe team esports don't uh we just have two star from chas Mac ea but here we go shadow coming in straight with a zap queen charge dragon rider attack All right that is really interesting seeing the dragon riders back because i mean we all know dragon riders were really strong on town of 14 but i feel like town of 15 hit them kind of hard with they're not getting a new level they are having to face a monolith most of the time except if you're using the lightning on it or or something but Otherwise, it is really hard for the troop to really stay uh, in the meta. So let's see yeah. how good he can actually use it because the Queen Charge so far is looking good. No surprising black mines, no uh, Tessa farm whatsoever. Opening looks solid, but the question is how powerful are those Dragon Riders on the back end? Yeah, that is a good question. With these Dragon Riders, the big thing is you don't necessarily need spells for them. Like I've noticed when I've used Dragon Riders is with uh, dragon riders are still really strong even without spells so if you can use your spells for the queen or a lot of different portions of the base that can be incredible value as the wall break is going to continue to the left trying to get this queen to make her way to the scatter enemy queen the poison he does have two more wall breaks so this is going to look like a crazy charge but if the queen actually walks left she can make her way a little bit to the right and then continue her way to that eagle artillery yeah, the queen can reach a lot right there, but the question though is um, oh. This queen is having no spell support anymore except one freeze and that's it The first black one already hit hitting the dragon rider right there oh. on the bottom side The queen now charging into this long channel exactly as you have said the king on the outside There's many there to use as funneling even though you don't really need the funneling for dragon riders because they're going from defense to defense so he's mainly used as a tank on the outside at the moment, I guess. Not sure if that is the best way to use it, but I mean, so far, Dragon Riders look kind of healthy, but there's a lot of base still left to go. Man, I'm always so confused whenever I see the defensive rage tower. I think it's like my own rage that I use. I'm like, oh, cool. Why are my <laughs> yeah. troops going faster? This can be so confusing <laughs> when you see that in an attack. But Shadow's looking pretty solid here. But the Queen, unfortunately, she going down to that Crown Expo. That is a huge issue. Does he still have his... No, that Royal Champion, I don't see up. Only 25 seconds. So it's looking like we're seeing another solid defense here. Temper is going to be holding Shadow. And the Dragon Riders trying to make their way around that multi-target Inferno. But those healers trying to keep that king alive as long as possible just going down the king does have the phoenix so once he dies he comes back alive doing some extra damage and this one is just gonna be a time fail because that multi looks like it would probably go down to that dragon rider oh that is so yeah, and close triple we have riga Taurus of struck getting the triple for their side so that's great job great start for them but here we go we've got mech now coming in with a warden walk starting it off and he's coming in with a couple electro titans in the mix 
That's right, and he's going to use the f oh flame flinger, but not towards the scatter compartment. Instead, towards the top side to take down this eagle eventually. With the expo behind the eagle gone, this should be possible for sure. He's starting early with his, with his titans. Question now though is, how yeah. good can those titans survive that tunnel compartment, especially with another invisibility tower close by to the tunnel? So they're going to ignore that town hall for quite some time, depending on how the pathing looks like. Yeah, with the a lava hound coming out, so number one, this hound pops, the electric titans can absolutely smash through these pups, no problem. If he freezes up this town hall, the monolith needs to time this warden ability perfectly as he does there, but is it too early for this town hall to do quite a bit of damage here? Ooh, the titans so far are avoiding the tunnel, which means nothing is oh, in the do. tunnel explosion itself, but the tornado trap is rotating them back oh. into that town of poison. The Royal Gym at the bottom side is in to take down that single fern tower. Some titans are still alive, or only one titan if I see that correctly. While the Yetis yeah. are engaging versus the King on the left side, there is so many things happening at the same time. Yeah, we got Electro Titan over the left, like you mentioned, with the Royal Champion making her way. Still has her ability. Couple free spells in the mix. Hog Rider just dies off to the right. The Queen is gone. Now comes down to this RSC. Can she make her way through the rest of this with ability and the freezes? They need it. Oh, that was a clutch. Diggy to stun that scatter shot, but unfortunately, the cannons are locking onto the RSC. There's a freeze, but she might not be able to survive this. Um, no. Ah, oh, man. Wow. That's Another defense. Another defense, exactly as you have said it. Just, yeah, the tunnel compartment wa it was feeling a bit awkward with, like, the invisibility tower going off. And, ah, tough call, tough call. Those box spaces, those box spaces, they feel so hard to attack um, with yeah. those setups, with the... He is... He loves to bring E-Dragons. He's an E-Dragon attacker, now bringing the Super Witches, and the problem is with Super Witches, they can be quite slow. You have to always keep your eye on time for this, for this attack strategy. Yeah, that's right. They're slow, and at the same time, I feel like with the addition of the Monolith, they feel not the strongest, let's say like that, because with the Monolith shots taking down those... Uh, the big boys, it is really, really hard for those uh, witches to generate m as many as possible of them. At the same time, the lizard yeah. having some great value to take down the defending king. Um, and now we have the ice golem leading the charge with those witches right behind. We have one electro titan in there, which we have already said. Those titans are a great supportive troop as well. They don't need to always be your main squad. They can be a supportive tool as well to defend, yeah. or actually take down um, the defending clan castle troops, like for example Lava Hound. So let's see if this lockdown sure is doing a great job of opening everything. And so far, I would say it's looking great. It's looking good, but that single. Oh no, he lost one Super Witch. That could be critical. We don't have too many. As a single lock on, unfortunately, the Ice Golem wasn't able to die in time to freeze it. As look at all these freezes, left and right, freezes coming through. <laughs> but the log launcher is still going all the way to the town hall. There's a jump to try to give him access straight to the town hall, as a ward ability is protecting everything straight into the core. This is looking beautiful versus this base right there. It's 1 minute and 20 seconds left, and you have talked about it. They are not the wow. quickest troops, so knowing that there is over 1 minute left and he already reached that town hall is quite promising for him, but yeah. still, there's a lot of base still left to go down with the Royal Champion, though, being alive and with her ability, it's looking good, but wait a second, the town hall has to go down first, and it's there just it doing that. Yes, with these Super Witches still near this town hall now, losing his healers. The Super Witches are getting... Oh, they're getting targeted by the scatter shot. They're trying to take out the bomb tower. He's going to come down to the Royal Champion and her ability. If he's got the time, I think he's going to three-star this one. Yeah, and the last witch just barely generated another skeleton, which yep. can be clutched on this back end. Time-wise and tanking-wise, Royal Champion ability yeah. to finish off the last couple of defense. He can use the Royal Champion ability now. Only the Archdower left standing, a minion to clean things up. The Royal Champion trying oh, the her best, the Queen Ability. The 
No, the queen is going oh, to no, go for the no, wall, no, right? No. Don't, don't, queen. Yeah, there is I an will. opening at the bottom side. Queen? No. no. She doesn't want it. She doesn't want it. It's time. It's time. The RC stays alive. He's hoping. He's hoping. Can the RC get there? Does she? Ooh. Is it five? Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, no. No. Oh. Ugh. See his face. The 90. 9% two star. It was, yes, definitely the skeleton trap, but it was just the RC getting stalled on the skeleton trap. That's the thing. The RC, yeah. if she had a couple more shots, it would have been a three star. So great try there. Now we're seeing Wolf Shears coming in with a zap. Lalo, he's got starting off with that log launch. No, the flame player off to the right side, like you said, is one of the strongest siege machines for these pro players as we're seeing the queen that make her way closer to this town hall. We got all these Teslas up there with no healers. They really have to protect this queen. Ooh, the wall breaks are not going as planned. Where is the next wall break going? It's not going to open up to the, co uh, to the town hall. Like, this is going to be tricky to get that town hall. The queen already taking a lot of damage. Royal team to try to tank. There's the freeze, but the queen ability is going off and he has now a big big problem he somehow needs to take down that town of the king is struggling there as well he has two more freezes but without a rage this town hall could be a really big problem to take down uh -oh. especially it's the monolith in range the clan castle is coming out the queen is now under the town hall what is he doing you just have oh, to no. let this queen go down the fame finger is having insane value take a look at that but just this town hall dive the wall breaks were too quick he did not open the other yeah. compartment now he needs to send a huge part of his lado into the town hall and this is never what you would like to see yep and he clipped a lava hound so it protects it through this air defense takes out the enemy queen with the headhunter he tries to utilize that one ability to the best of his ability here as he now has a little mini lalo come to the left side behind that hound but this defensive rage is going to do a lot of damage as the Monolith does just clear this Grand Warden now. Yeah, maybe he can still pull this through considering how OP oh. this Flameflinger was. That's the value was yeah. incredible. He's for sure being able to get this on a really high percentage. At least the Dragon Rider trying its best. But Ooh. there's one big defense still in the middle. Yeah. And this defense is trying to let this base survive and is not going to go anywhere. Yeah, look at this, 48 seconds left, but now the Phoenix, the Minions, the Lava Pups are getting distracted on the defensive Lava Hound to the right side. Yes, the Dragon Rider can make its way to the bottom through to the multi, but it will get picked off once it gets close to that Monolith there. Ooh, the Dragon Rider trying to take down another bidding. Every single bidding counts, especially in this match right now, where none of the two teams have gotten a 3-star just yet. And this means they're trying to get as many high percentage attacks as possible because they can be the game changer, the deciding factor. The Phoenix taking bidding after bidding. He's at 95 now. And considering that this attack, he had to send the Warden and everything to the town, which was not planned, Considering that, getting a 95 is... This is his favorite attack to use. One of the best Blizzard Lalo attackers in the world coming in with the balloons. Right early. Gonna try to help damage this bomb tower. He's going Stow Slammer. Nope. Blimp. In with this Blizzard. Oh, what? What? Okay, I oh. thought the, the Slammer would go uh, for sure towards the air defense. I mean... Uh. That was a crazy pathing right there, and this means the town hall should easily go down. Value looks great, but the question now is if the value is good enough to really for him to turn this into a three star, because this air defense might lure the queen into the wrong direction, or does he want to have the queen uh, go into the bottom side? We will find out. Yeah, this queen looks like she has nowhere to go but to the bottom here after this gold sword is going to go down. Yes, there is a wall breaker there, so the queen can fall into the scatter as the king has been deployed as well down there behind a golem. So he's looking to get a ton of value with his heroes here. Yeah, golem going in, queen going in. He has another wall break to get into the multi-inferno tower as well. 
And then even another wall break. Is he going to try to get towards the monolith? That would be crazy. Um, oh, wow. Depending on where that next wall break is going. Is he going to send it? I mean, King is already down. Queen is now going in. But I think she's going to go for the Lixler storage next. So she's going to the outside again. Yep, that's yep. right. The wall is... Is the wall open? Yes, one tile of it the is. wall is open. The Queen is going back wow. inside. And maybe he's even going to get what? the monolith based on that. With Queen ability, she's stepping... Oh, she's going for the storage. He has the two RC invisibility spells. He can use it. Oh, wow. Yep. Are you serious? What? <laughs> Oh my, the value with his heroes! And by the way, this is That's where crazy. you can see, um, like, he is right now always battling with stars from Na'Vi for like yeah. the first spot in, in Legend League. And you can see exactly why. I mean, are you kidding? What was that attack? He's swagging, what is it, three freezes and invisibility and a haste? Yep. I mean, oh my, look at that! I'm not Jeez. sure if it's the smartest in such a close match to swag, especially the haste, because that could like speed things up a little bit. Yeah. But it's like yep. for sure showing like why this guy is competing with stars always for this number one spot in Legend League, and it is just crazy. In the right hand, this strategy, by the way, I think it's uh, a flame flinger in the mix. Okay, good luck. Let's see if he can keep this queen to charge her way through. Looks good. I mean, I cannot wait to. I mean, we have seen a couple of people trying to attempt this strategy today. Some of them failed, some of them got, I want to say, more of the closer three stars. If I remember the attack of Exorcist, where the queen is going down and his healers are transitioning over to the Royal Gem. You could call it maybe a little lucky as well. Um, but either way, it is a really powerful strategy in the right hands, but it's one of the strategies which is not forgiving mistakes at all. On Town of 14 yeah. was like a super strong all rounder strategy where even if things are going wrong, you will still get the three star. On Town of 15, it is yeah. still the same all rounder strategy, but at the same time, it is like one little mistake, especially versus out of the Rage Towers, and your entire attack is done. You can see a Rage yep. Tower close by with a Warden. You do not want to have a Rage Tower Warden on your Queen. Ooh. A Rage Tower Warden is yeah. like taking half the hit points with one shot. This can be deadly, and take a look, he's exactly charging into that area. I would be scared right now. <laughs> uh, uh, that is a lot of stuff to have to keep your eye on as the wall break does open this wall for this queen to step in. You have to rage up this queen, and she can easily die through ability if you're not paying attention near, especially like you said, that raged up defensive ward. And as the queen is going through, a Tesla farm is here, but the problem is, the Queen might not walk into this Eagle Artillery, which is definitely probably what he wants. That's right. The Eagle so far is getting avoided. There is... Okay, he is scared as well. He's yeah. freezing the Rage Tower to make sure his Queen yeah. is just, like, taking down the Warden before. But I think soon this Rage Tower is get activated, and then we will have a Raged Up Eagle. Yep, there we go. Those shots can now really hurt, and the Rage Up Expo is not making things any better. Yeah, as we have the Warden gonna burn his ability to protect this Town Hall. Yes! We're protecting balloons through the Town Hall. The invisibility spell causing these balloons to continue through. Pulling some traps. Queen's ability is popped. King's ability goes off. So much happening all at once as this Royal Champion is gonna try to continue our way through, but he still has six more loons as he loses his Queen! Oh no, can the Royal Champion save the day again? We had a lot of attacks uh -oh. today where the Royal Champion was the saver in the attacks. Yep. Royal Champion jumping about the wall, jumping into the next compartment, into the next area of the base. The one loon with the Phoenix trying to tank for the Royal Champion. And there's more loons for the back end. There's the freeze. Can this work, yep. Carbon? Time is ticking. Oh the wall break to help provide a little bit of a distraction for the RC. Look at that! The RC saves a little bit of health because of the super wall breaker cutting across. But unfortunately, we have to get through the defensive clan castle as well. And it's going to be a 96% two-star for Tim Tastic. A couple of times from Chance Mac Gaming, uh, quite low percentage two-stars. So, let's see. We have... Again, a Lalo attack, Blizzard Lalo, it is yet again 
But this time, this tech, this opening looks different because it seems like he's playing a, a small lotto part for the eagle. Ooh, we'll see. Smokey coming in with this. Oh, we've got the balloon. There's the balloon. Okay. We got super wizards trying to take out the scatter shot. Stepping in. Takes out the enemy RC. They're continuing their way through. They're gonna. Oh, poison gets Ooh. launched, but he does grab the ground expo in the mix as well. Yeah, but. Okay. Was this enough value? This is like what I'm. Would a Yeti blimp with the rage? Wouldn't that have gotten maybe similar? But is the expo, the ground expo, that important? Okay, well he's playing the hero part well, on the other side of yeah. the town, so I guess the ground expo going down is crucial. But let's see if yeah, the value is help. enough. But at the same time, we have seen already earlier that the key thing with those super wizard blimps is not the value with the blimp. I feel like it's more about yeah. what those players can do with those heroes after. Yeah, it's about the funneling, and the, if you can tank down, especially like that expo, it can help provide a bunch of protection in terms of all, you don't have all those that damage it output onto your heroes. As now the queen is getting through this defensive king with the assistance of these headhunters, clutch here. It's like the, that defensive king couldn't even get one hit off. Brilliant job, so that queen can keep her health as the charge continues with this King's ability going through and look at the wall break going straight on in and he's going to be able to continue to wall break into the multi and the Queen get a ton of value here. Yeah, this wall break again, like just seeing those angles, making sure what can my Queen reach and everything, this is like always what impresses me so much and yes, the lotto part and feel like it's crucial, but most of the time nowadays in Tunnel 15, I feel like just the heroes and how they're used is just a deciding factor um, on how good you can really are, like how you can really be on Town Hall 15 with the strategy. We have now the Warden coming in with the... Oh, 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 oh. This Warden ability was wow. genius. And the loons are just keep going with having two freezes on the back end. But wait a second, the Poison Tower ah, in the poison. beginning did not go down. Red Mines! Yeah, that, that defensive Poison Tower was so deadly right there. How unfortunate! Wow! Which means that we're gonna have a defense, and this is gonna be a low percentage for Smokey Bear. Which means that Chasmac Gaming, this will put Empire to 11, and Chasmac can still tie this up on Stars, and it will come down to percentage for the match, as General X will be the final attacker. We have, I believe, like no. a 93. Point Eight. Known as well for the defense, but their offense was really solid as well. So seeing them falling short was quite surprising. And we have another skitty donut. Ooh. Can I X just make sure that you're not misdropping those spells by just one yeah. tile? Don't Ooh. leave up one oh. of these. He's, yes, he gets it. all of that value. Incredible. Just so precise with that General X taking down the clan cast with the Eagle, the multi-target Inferno. But what I was going to say was just before the attack was going to end was Empire Gaming. What an impressive kind of performance they've come in with all the rest of their attacks other than what Smokey Beer the 78 with the lowest percentage here. We had the triple. We had a 97, a 99, and a 95. That is what is going to be winning them this war because of the very high percentage that they are getting when they don't three star. Of course, that's the tiebreaker at the end of the day after stars. So you really have to focus on every single possible ability you can get down as we're seeing General X now setting his queen up to this enemy RCS. This king just now comes back alive. The king with the splash of the Phoenix actually took down the multi Fire Tower, which can be huge in this attack. Wow. And now the queen is Funneling this loud from the top side. I'm not sure if the double lava hound was intended. Normally, you're just trying to have like this one hound going in there. At the same time, yeah. though, now we have the Yetis tanking for the Royal with the left side. So, again, we have a complete crazy multitasking approach right now. And we have again the annoying invisibility spell or uh, invisibility tower behind the town hall, which could Ooh. always be a big problem. Now we uh -oh. have the Trinade Trap, so he needs another freeze. Yeah, as the Warden ability is going to have to be used onto the Town Hall, but these balloons are very low health, meaning just one red air bomb can all spell disaster for him. He has 11 more balloons. 
but these blues are getting picked off quickly. The owl is getting targeted by the monolith as he has balloons coming out to the wizard towers and trying to pick off all the rest of the buildings around. But looks like the rage up defensive multi is going to probably be too much. And this, by the way, is exactly Ooh. the setup I mean. We have the one spell tower close by to the town hall. We have a rage tower covering. Would have covered the eagle. It just went down earlier. It covered two more inferno towers and two expos. And pretty much always, whenever we have seen this up, uh, this setup, we have seen people trying to use the lightning spell on that. We have seen trying to use like the blimp, skelly donut. You cannot get through this part of the base with anything like regular, um, except maybe electro dragon, e dragon spam. But otherwise, it is just so hard to get through this part of the base yeah. with any true combination that you're forced to use something like a blimp or skelly donut entry, which not or like which 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 works around this rage tower and just this yeah. classic box space setup which is now nowadays becoming so uh popular is making attacking like a true nightmare i feel like as soon as this setup is getting more and more popular more and more people are copying bases especially after this weekend it is going to be really hard to overcome and congratulations for empire gaming winning this match right here perfect defense this is uh even turn of 15 quite impressive and uh yeah, Jasmine Gaming on the other side. Really need for the third match then step things up. Overall, 10 to yeah. 11, low scoring match, but Empire Gaming getting the win. Yeah, we'll see on the next uh, screen the percentages here as it pops up. But look at that. We had a hot triple from Asus 95, 99, 97. This could have easily yeah. been a 14 star war if you think about it for Empire. Just those small percentages that didn't go their way, but.